Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. And it's actually the morning, so hopefully I can turn this into a habit. Who knows? Um, it is Monday, January 18th, the feast day of St. Prisca. Uh, and she is a, a martyr of the Christian faith, and she was brutally tortured um, and imprisoned uh, for believing in Jesus Christ. And she supposedly had a, um, she knew St. Paul personally, uh, which is why she was so convicted in the faith. Um, and it's also uh, Martin Luther King Day. So um, happy Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and hopefully um, we are all striving to to have social justice um, and realize um, that we're all loved by Christ, no matter what the color of our skin is or what our religious affiliation is. Um, we all treat each other with dignity. So that's always great um, to do. So I wonder what Martin Luther King would think of today's present day after all the work that he did not too long ago. Um, either way, today's gospel is from Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to him and objected. Why do the disciple why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. So, uh, we got the question about fasting today, um, or where the people are accustomed to fasting, and they're noticing uh, through their awareness that uh, the disciples of Jesus are not fasting, and they're confused. Um, so they're asking these questions because um, because fasting is you know a sacrifice and it's something that is a, is a reminder to grow closer to Christ and to God. But Jesus did it. Why? Because he he is God. He's God made man. God made incarnate. So that's why Jesus says it's it's unnecessary. To, to fast while he's here on earth, right here and right now. Um, so so, I, so Jesus, Jesus was never having an identity crisis. He knew who he was and he knew why he was sent and uh, what he was sent to do and here on earth uh, from God the Father. Um, so how many people of us need to ask that same question? Um, my, myself included. I think it's an everlasting journey of faith. Um, then also keep in mind that uh, Jesus, he, he came to fulfill the Old Testament um, by, the, by the new. So you know, he's how he says, I have come to make all things new. Um, and that's why he's got all this imagery here with the old wineskins, the new wineskins, and the, and the um, what else was it, the cloth, the cloak or whatever. Um, so yeah, so that's like Jesus wants to revitalize us and, and recreate us and, and build us into somebody that's a new and so that's, uh, that's, that's uh, I think, the point of why we fast, or why we should be fasting, um, in some way, shape, or form, now that Jesus is physically gone um, from earth, unless you're Catholic and you got to go to, to Mass to receive him in the Eucharist. But with all this being said, we can get a few, there's a few questions here that we could ask today um, for our challenge. Um, and one of them is, you know, like the people in the in the gospel today, that do we ask questions about our faith or anything in that matter, whether it be on the news or whatever it is, um, if we are uncertain, you know, especially if we know that by asking those questions will bring us clarity or it will at least make us better. Um, and that's, that's the challenge. Um, question number one. Um, and s question number two is, is do we believe and are we convicted in something or someone Christ, 
so much that we'd risk being a martyr of the faith like St. Prisca, um, our saint of the day, or even a martyr for, for true justice and true virtue like Martin Luther King. So I think there's too many people that are just too stale and they just kind of just flow by whenever we're called to act upon what we are truly, the, truly believe in. That's in virtue. The problem is the world and society that we live in. We have too many people that are risking their lives and that are that are just not virtuous and they're not believing in true in truth just in general. So that's and that's part of the problem of today's society. Uh, but like like it says in the gospel, we are called to make all things new um, through Jesus Christ. So there's a challenge. Hopefully you got something out of that. <clears throat> have a great start to your week and God bless. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. Amen.